I'll start recording. All right. <clears throat> the first screen we're going to pull up is, I believe it's this one. Okay. Um, let's do this. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, coding duplicate parts, part one. Uh, tonight we're gonna go over begin grid and end grid. Begin grid is a component of a G-code where coordinate commands to create a part will be duplicated. The formula works as follows. <clears throat> you type in, in all caps, begin grid. Type the number of columns you want, rows, your starting X position, starting Y position, your incremental x, that's the distance it will move in the x direction. Incremental y, same thing, but in the y direction. Uh, by row, you can either choose to organize um, row by row or column by column. Actually, it really ultimately <clears throat> does not matter because you're going to end up with the same parts anyway. And the last line cut order, uh, whether or not you choose row by row or column by column, you can choose to cut it that way, or you can choose to cut it in a zigzag pattern. And what will happen is the torch, um, usually it will cut, say the first row, and then uh, the last row in the part, it'll move up, and then move to the left, move up, move to the right. Um, and really that's, that's really, there's, it's just a matter of preference when it comes to that. Question, so, Ron. Yes, sir. Which way you choose, does it depend on the, the uh, thickness of the material? Because are we worried about warping because of cutting in, in the same place for too long or what? Uh, in a case, if we were using like thin aluminum, um, you'd probably give it some consideration uh, because you are going to get warpage. Uh, in that case, I would probably cut row by row. Um, and that's a, that's a good point that you brought up. Uh, along with these uh, whiteboards, I'll create some scenarios where in actuality it would make a difference. Um, so that's a good point, Ben. Good, good job bringing that up. Um, Couple things I want to explain: the the columns and rows and the star points. That's that's pretty self-explanatory. The incremental x. It's the grid spacing in the x direction for each column in the grid. The spacing occurs from the lower left corner of each part. And uh, if we were to just, uh, draw a square. Uh, just pretend these are identical. As far as material of a sheet that we're cutting, or yeah, these are the actual pre parts? Pretend, pretend we have a giant sheet. Say it's like a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> when we're dealing with uh, begin grid, your measurements are going to take place from the lower left hand corner. Okay, so from this lower left hand corner, to this lower left hand corner, <clears throat> that is your incremental X. So when you're actually creating your drawing, you need to be careful to fit it within the parameters uh, so it, it fits inside your, your spacing. Thing. Uh, we'll, we'll get into more detail about that. And the same rule applies if we were uh, from the lower left hand corner to the lower left hand corner above the part, <clears throat> that's your incremental Y. Everything takes place as far as that measurement from the lower left hand coordinates of, of the part. Okay. <clears throat> um, I have an example here of um, a begin grid command line. This is how it would be. Um, this is how it would be entered. 
begin grid all caps, space three, space four, space 0 0.5, and so on and so on, okay? Um, three, and there's gonna be three columns in the grid. Four, four rows in the grid. 0 0.5, our X star position will be 0 0.5. 0 0.5, star Y is 0 0.5. Uh, I've chosen incremental X 2.5. So every part will be laid out two and a half inches from the lower left hand corner of the first part. 3.5, that's increment Y. <clears throat> that's the spacing and the vertical direction, the Y direction from the lower left hand corner of each part. And that's going to be three and a half inches. I uh, chose to. Uh, form this row by row. Uh, if you wanted it to be column by column, it would be uh, zero. And the cut order I chose is a zigzag pattern. Uh, to me, um, when you go in a zigzag pattern, it just seems like it makes more sense uh, time-wise. Now, will the time be negligible? Sure, but I mean, if you're cutting out a hundred small parts, um, it's definitely gonna be faster to, to zigzag. Ron, uh, yes. is there, so one signifies that it will be a zigzag pattern. Does zero mean it goes column zero, or right. row? Is there another? Right, that depends on if you choose um, column by column and you put, um, a zero here, the cut pattern is going to move column by. Th this first number is just the, uh, it's the drawing organization of the parts. Okay. Um, and so I said it really, ultimately it doesn't matter, you're going to end up with the same parts, but, um, and, and, or if you were to pick row by row, uh, it would just mean that it's going to draw out all the rows first, uh, and then the column, it's, like I said, it really, but this last number, say if you had a zero here, um, it would cut the columns first and then come back up to the beginning, cut, cut the next set of columns and then come up, cut the next set of columns. Same if you were to pick a one here and a zero here, it's gonna cut the first row, then come back, cut the second row, come back, cut the third row, come back, cut the fourth row. No. Okay, so if you have zero as your cut order, it goes by what number you have before it, whether it's by row or by column. Right, right. Okay. Um, I have a question, Ron. Your, okay. your start X, mm -hmm. you have 0 0.5. Is that because you're starting a half an inch from the edge of the material? Um, this is from our, our point of origin, our absolute zero position. Mm -hmm. So think for this example, we have our torch centered in the corner of the material, right on the X and Y axis. Mm -hmm. And I chose a half inch by half inch um, just in case there are any, um, say if the, the material isn't completely square or um, Maybe there's some nicks in one edge. I gave a little bit of room. Um, it, it's for uh, for like waste material. But in the perfect world, in a four you know, by eight sheet, am I starting a half an inch from the edge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's exactly what you'd be doing. Um, okay. We would center the torch uh, in the upper left hand corner of the material, and when we began, the torch would move to a half inch um, in and a half inch down, and you would start there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and please ask questions as we're going along, because it's this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky, okay? After we enter this begin grid command, okay, <clears throat> we really have no relationship to our home position, our absolute zero. You know how we set x zero, y zero as our home position? A mm -hmm. point of origin. Mm -hmm. When you enter a begin grid command, you're creating a virtual zero zero position. 
So when you program what you want to be cut, you're actually going to do it from a zero zero perspective. Like say, okay, we're this is this is the part where um, people get confused. Okay, we're a half inch in, and you would think if we wanted to, uh, all right, what what I chose to do for this demonstration is we're making a rectangle two inches in width by three inches in height. Okay, now normally when we would program that, if we started from this position, we would make it x 2.5, y 3.5. You following me? But this, whatever, whatever our dimensions, you want to keep that half inch on there? No. And in a normal in a normal program, we would. But after we enter begin grid, the wet whatever we program, it's from a virtual zero zero position. So you got to think of you're you're basically starting at zero zero. Again. It creates uh, it creates an alternate zero, a sub program. It's a and everything will be from from a zero zero perspective. So you enter like the actual dimensions of the cut rather than the coordinate that you're going to. Right. This this line, this is this line only applies to where we're going to start. Okay. And now, from this line, when we would write a program, we would write the program as if this were zero zero. When we when we uh, when I pull up the um, the drawing, it'll uh, okay. Hold on, I'll, I'll do it this way. All right, we have our. Uh, here, I'll I'll stop this. Open new whiteboard. So this is on the assumption that we're writing the entire program ourselves, or this is if we've, um, in CAD, you know, drew out the piece, signed, what have you, and then decided that, you know, we wanted out of a four by eight sheet, you know, we wanted to get 20 of them. This is, like if, this is if we're drawing it ourselves. Mm. I mean, if, if we're programming the coordinates in manually. All right, so. Not that it matters, but all right. So we have our uh, x and y axis. Okay. Now we program star coordinates in a half inch in and a half inch up. Sorry, um, I want to do a square. Okay, our uh, and. My intention is to create a two by three rectangle, okay? And X 0 0.5, Y 0 0.5 is our star position. When we write the program for this square though, we're gonna write it as if this point was zero, zero. After begin grid, we're at virtual zero, zero all over. We're not going to use we're not going to use the 0.5 for anything. That's just up until up, up to this point, the begin grid just just tells us where we want to start drawing our shape, and we we would program it as if we were in a zero zero position. So, are you saying when we start off, we set we set our zero zero point at this particular point, the um the begin grid is basically highlighting the first row in which we're going to be cutting in, and then we'll have to make adjustments from there for, for each piece and for each column. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that's not exactly what I'm saying. Okay. In the begin grid line, we designate parameters that are going to start uh, a drawing. Okay. Um, and our X and Y coordinate for our star point is x 0 0.5, y 0 0.5. Okay, <clears throat> now within that, after begin grid, just after it, 
we're going to write a program for whatever shape we want to cut out, whether it be a square, a square with holes in it, whatever. But the coordinates, the starting coordinates for that drawing are going to be at a zero, zero. So it's basically like, okay, we're going to start here. But when we program, we're basically like starting over. That 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that will become a new 0, 0 position after we yank it. When I, uh, we'll, we'll go into the programming real quick. Let me pull up this other whiteboard so I can go over this and uh, it'll start to make sense. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is an example G code of our begin grid and end grid scenario. Uh, the reason that I won't be sending this to you is because I left out where to turn the torch off and where to turn the torch on. Okay. So we have our usual G20, M106, fabheadmode.cut. We designate our point of origin, X0, Y0, okay? But instead of moving it to whatever position we're going to start, we just move right to G603. Okay. And in this begin grid line, this is where basically we're telling it where to start at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That'd be like the, the, the substitute we would put in here as G00, X0.5, Y0.5. We're just putting that in this begin grid line. Uh, and I just, I kind of went through and said that, you know, we got our command input start coordinates, um, we have our columns and rows, our incremental order, uh, whatever pattern we chose, and the cut order. Okay. <clears throat> um, very important. The first command, this is going to be a reference point. This is where we put in our G00. <clears throat> X0, Y0. This is where we want to start. This is going to start me right at the 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And you can make this whatever. If you, if you change this to X0.25, it'll start the drawing at 0 0.75. Um, when we, when we get into the actual program and I lay it out, you'll see what I mean. But if you kind of visualize the following commands, X0, Y3, creating a three inch vertical line, uh, X2, Y3, uh, we're creating a horizontal line. It's, it's, it's a, a basic rectangle program, uh, a two by three rectangle program. Uh, and the end line, you know, we, it's just to close the rectangle, going back to zero, X zero, Y zero. We put in our end grid, uh, raise the torch, and then down here, we take it back to our actual uh, X zero, Y zero, okay? And what takes place, uh, we, in it, we entered our initial start point and parameters. From our start point, we created a two by three rectangle. We duplicated our rectangle in three columns and four rows, giving us a total of 12 identical rectangles. These rectangles will all end up being spaced a half inch apart in both the X and Y directions. And the reason this is, is because our rectangle is two inches in width and our spacing is two and a half inches. So, <clears throat> that gives us a half inch of space in between each rectangle in the row and the same thing in the y direction. Uh, our rectangle is three inches in height. Our spacing is three and a half inches in the y direction. So there's going to be a half inch between each rectangle and e in, the, in each of the columns. So this would, this would automatically, if you, if you entered this, it would automatically cut 12 of them. You don't have to put a quantity anywhere because you already established that it's a three by four grid. Right, right, exactly. 
Well, wait a minute. I'm confused now because I thought you said that when you do this, it could end up being a hundred and some odd lines. How well, does this? If we, if, if we were to, if we were to write this out manually, we would have to repeat this code over and over. And oh, not only okay, this, so we, no program. Yeah. So so say say we drew out this rectangle. Uh, we turn the torch off. Then we have to write another line to move to a new set of coordinates. Program another. Um, rectangle and all that would have to be done in relation to our absolute zero our point of origin so we would have to keep checking okay where can i make this rectangle okay this next one will go here how we could you know there'd be a lot of coordinates we'd have to enter uh but by doing this we only have to do it one time and we get 12 parts uh, I was actually thinking about writing it out manually just so we, you could see what the difference was, but I just, I didn't have time to do that today. I mean, that, that's, that's a code that's going to take, you know, forever. Probably would have took Churchville like two weeks to write something like that. No, but it never got done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're probably right. Ben. Never would have got done. Um, right. I think the, the best thing to do would be to pull up the, uh, the actual software, and we'll go through it line by line, and I'll explain things as we're going. Uh, I won't annotate the parts that we already know. All right, from this point, we go right into a G603. Uh, just a side note, so you guys know, um, if you were in another environment, okay, our, our CNC is a plasma cutter. And in a perfect world, we would have a self-leveling head on our torch. Okay, if we did have that, uh, the command that we would enter instead of G603 would actually be G601. G601 is the code to begin plasma cut. We use G603 to start our shapes because the torch that we have is manually controlled through Z adjustments. So this is why we use G603. I uh, just wanted to throw that out there. And uh, at the end of the program, uh, instead of using like M50 and M51, uh, we would use G600 uh, and plasma cutting. But we don't have a self-leveling torch head, so we use G603. All right, we type in our begin grid command. Just begin grid, space. We want three columns, four rows, our X star position, 0 0.5. Uh, that's where the 12 pieces come in right there. Okay. Yeah. Our Y, 0 0.5. Uh, we want two and a half inch spacing in between each rectangle on the X axis. We want three and a half inches of spacing on the y-axis and remember that spacing is from the lower left-hand corner of the parts. Okay. I'm going to choose row by row and I'm going to choose a zigzag pattern. <clears throat> um, I'll actually show you the difference in the uh, in the other patterns. So.
time. And that's an actual command? <clears throat> that's an actual, not, I mean, not all this here. This is just a notation for you guys. Oh, okay. The begin grid up to here. Uh, anything in parentheses, you can put anything you want in these lines and parentheses, like this power max 85, we don't really have to put that in there. Uh, just the M106 H plasma one. Anything that's in parentheses, um, the software won't recognize that. Now, you have to do it at the end of the command line. Like earlier today, when I was doing this lecture, I tried to annotate in between each of these, just so you can see it as we went along. Mm -hmm. I confused the software, it wouldn't let me do it. Um, the, the spacing actually has to be one space apart in between uh, each numerical input. Okay, so, uh, all right, all right, I got to speed it up a little bit. All right, we start our new reference point, G00, X0, Y0, and we're going to put in a speed rate. I'm going to use 95, uh, it's actually inches per minute. Um, this is where we would tell the torch to turn on after this line. And I'll explain why when you start watching the code. G01, X0, Y3. X2. Y3, X2, Y0, I'm just going to put uh, So when you write your program, you're actually doing it from a zero, zero position. You want to make sure that this first line is G00 to move to your reference point. If you make it G01, the problem is going to be that <clears throat> everything's connected. I'll show you that too. All right. Here we would tell the torch to turn off. And everything's finished in an end grid. Okay. You, didn't raise the torch, huh? you didn't raise what? the torch. Well, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Oh, okay. All right, that completes the grid subcommand. This is where we would raise the torch. And now when it cuts all 12, it'll return to our actual zero, zero. Mm, okay. okay. So like I said, that's the hardest thing to understand is that after we get in, after we dive in at right after begin grid, we're starting from a new zero zero position. So you would program your shape accordingly to an X zero Y zero. Okay, I'm gonna save this. Line six, I'm trying to see where line six tells it to make 12 pieces. Uh, hold, hold on a second. Go ahead. Line six, uh, three by four. We're, we're building a part, it's three columns by four rows. It's gonna multiply these. So it's gonna, it's gonna copy this, it's, it's gonna build the initial, but it's gonna construct it so the same part is four, uh, four across 
and there's going to be three columns of four. There's going to be three columns of four parts. Ah, okay, okay. So let's close this. You can see now, instead of just one, we have 12. And if we were to play, I have it on 95, so it'll move pretty fast. You'll kind of see it move through the lines of code <clears throat> um, where we have the torch on and the torch off. It's very important that they're in these positions uh, because otherwise the torch is going to stay on the entire time. I want that to happen. So you can see it's going to cut out our first two by three square, move to the next one. And then it's going to move up to this uh, this next row. It's going to cut across, move up, cut across, move up, cut across, come back down to our zero position. So the I rows are counted horizontally. What's that? The rows are counted horizontally. Yeah, rows are horizontal, columns are vertical. Gotcha. Right, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to zero everything out. I'm going to refresh this. To show you what happens if you put in a G01. All right, I want to change this to um, say I want to do columns, do a column by column. See how it changes the cut pattern. It's going to um, cut this column. And it's going to come back down and cut this column, come back down and cut this column, and then return to the home position. So between one and zero, the difference that it makes, if you do one, it'll cut a horizontal um, row. But right. if you do if, zero, it'll cut a vertical. Where my cursor is now, uh, as of right now, it cuts um, – each vertical, vertical, if it was a one, it would cut it horizontal first. Oh, okay, yeah. That's so really to do that, your second number would also have to, uh, your second number would be zero if you want to execute row by row or line by line. Uh, if we were to change this to a one, okay, it's gonna it's gonna zigzag the columns <coughs> instead of you know, moving back to the top before it cuts each column. It would cut this column, then move down, cut this column, move over here, cut this column, and then it's gonna return to the home position. Gotcha, gotcha. And it kind of goes back and forth instead of like cut, go back to the beginning, cut, go back to the beginning, cut. Let me show you what happens if you put a G01 command for your reference point. You notice as all the lines are solid. So it'll ruin the pieces. Yep, it'll ruin everything. Uh, the only time, the only cut that's not gonna be solid is the return to the home position. So it's very important your first line after begin grid is a G00. It's just a reference line. It's just telling you in your new virtual 00 where you want this part to start. To me, I mean, it's a no brainer. I want it to start at 00. I mean, as far as me, myself, when I write programs, when I use begin grid, this line is always going to be G00, X0, Y0. I don't know why you would put anything else in because you're just making it more difficult if you do it any other way. Yeah, because you'd have to go in there and edit the program and turn the torch off. Exactly. It, it's 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 nuts. It, it just it just makes everything ridiculous. So why why would I want to start drawing a part here? Oh, one other thing if I got time to show you. Okay. Say um say I made a mistake, okay, and Okay, we allowed for three and a half inch of spacing from the corner of uh, the left hand corner of each part. 
Look what happens <coughs> uh, when we do that. You see it actually goes above our spacing and starts cutting into the next part. Mm -hmm. So you want to be careful that whatever part you create, it's going to fit within your spacing parameters. This number should never be equal to or bigger than this number. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I'm going to change up the whiteboard so it's a, and I'm going to add some stuff to it so it's a little easier to understand. But um, like I said always make sure that's a G00. Because if you're cycling through, it's going to go to the virtual zero, zero, then turn the torch on, start cutting. It's going to finish the square, turn the torch off, and then return back to the beginning. You can watch it cycle through. The green cursor actually won't highlight any of the mechanical commands. <clears throat> 